Hi friends, hello and welcome back to this class of dance. Today we are going to talk about the journey of Pandanalur Bani. Pandanalur is a village in Turupandanal Taluk in Tanjavur district of Tamil Nadu state. It is located 65 kilometers east from the district headquarters of Tanjavur, 9 kilometers from Tirupandanal and 260 kilometers from the state capital Chennai. Kumbakonam, another major temple town where the divine nectar fell in ocean churning duel between the Asuras and the Devas, Manthana, hence Kumba, is nearby. Since Pandanallur is a village in Tanjavur district, the main bani is called Tanjavur Bani. As Pandanallur is but a small village on Tanjavur district, the main bani is Tanjavur or Tanjore. Tanjavur was the cultural capital of Tamil Nadu region. It was where maximum temples were built in the 9th and the 11th century, including Raja Raja Chola's Brihadishwara, where the Karanas of dance too are depicted. The other important temples and Bani and Karanas depiction is at Chidambaram, hence the importance of Kattumar Koil. It is also called because of the four brothers Chinnaya, Ponnaya, Shivanandam and Vadivel forming the Tanjavur quartet. They are court musicians under the Maratha ruler Sarfoji II from 1798 to 1832. Their descendants and marriage alliances led to creation of what is called as Tanjavur Bani of which Pandanallur is but a popular branch. Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai, his son Chokalingam Pillai and grandson Subraya Pillai are the creators and repository of Pandanarlur style of Bharatanatyam. These three gurus had a direct access to the Tanjavur quartet compositions as part of their family heritage. The Pandanarlur style of Bharatanatyam is mainly attributed to Guru Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai from 1869 to 1954, who lived in the village of Pandanallur. Often hailed as the father of Bharatnatyam, he learned from his aunt's son, one Kumaraswami Natvavnar, and later went to Tanjavur to learn from Mahadevan, son of Shivanandam of Tanjavur quartet fame. Meenakshi Sundaram married his teacher, Mahadevan's daughter, to cement the bond as Sitar Maestro Ravi Shankar did with his guru Ustad Allauddin Khan marrying his daughter Annapurna Devi and thus got further link to legendary Tanjavur quartet. Meenakshi Sundaram's father was Satyamurti Natuvanar and his mother the daughter of Ponnaya Pillai of Tanjavur quartet. Thus both by birth as well as marriage. Meenakshi Sundaram was closely associated with the quartet. This gave him a head start in propagation of Bharatnatyam far and wide. His name and fame spread quickly and soon he started teaching many stars dancers. He had the good fortune of attracting prized pupil who had already acquired some fame like Ram Gopal who had learnt first under Kutumnar Koil Muttu Kumaran Pillai and Rukpini Devi, in whose institution later, Kalakshetra, Kuttumunar Koil Muttu Kumar Pillai was the first Bharatnatyam guru to teach. This made other talents like Shanta Rao, Mranalini Sarabhai, Tara Chaudhary, U. S. Krishna Rao, and Chandrabhaga Devi flock to him. His sojourn at the celebrated Kalakshetra lasted a bare six months, but in that short time he attracted all these stars of the style. He did not feel well with the humid climate of Madras due to its proximity by the sea. His enamoured pupil then followed him to his village Pandanallur where he trained them. Meenakshi Sundaram's tradition was continued by A.P. Chokalingam Pillai and his son P. C. Subraraya Pillai, K. P. Kittapa Pillai, 
P. S. Swaminathan. Between them, they accounted for the grooming of a third of all Bharatanatyam dancers of their period. Pichaya Pillai, son-in-law of Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai, represented another branch of this lineage and his disciple T. M. Arunachalam and Vasudevan, Sikkil Ramaswamy and K. J. Govindarajan added body to that heritage. When Rukmini Devi wanted to be his disciple, the maestro was hesitant to take on a Brahmin student, especially someone who was already 30. She was on her honeymoon trip to Australia with her husband George and in the next cabin was Cleo Nordi, the chief instructor of the famed Anna Pavlova. To pass the boredom, the long ship journey, Rukmini thought she could learn some steps of Western classical ballet from Cleo Nordi, who chided her by pointing out that India being so rich in its own traditions, why learn the Western form? This brought Rukmini to the resolve to find Bharatanatyam Guru upon her return. She found her master. It took her a year to finally convince him to agree to train her. Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai broke a taboo as he shared his treasured hereditary knowledge with a non-hereditary dancer. He also trained several Devdasis such as Pandanallur Jayalakshmi, Tangachi Ammar and Sabrijitam. Tirval Puthur Swamitha Pillai, also known as T.K. Swamitha Pillai, learned Bharatanatyam for 10 years under Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai. The Pandanallur Bani reflects the lofty value of its guru. Its name has always been synonymous with uncompromises, classicism and commitment to excellence. Some of the hallmarks of this style are its rich and diverse advocacy, the complexity of its rhythmic permutations, its purity of line, power and precision, its emphasis on symmetry and harmony, its lyricism and musicality and its emphatic rejection of anything remotely smacking of gimmicky or the pretentious. Intense musicality has always marked the Bani where melody and movement flow hand in hand. As intricately linked as a word and its meaning, Subraya Pulya always emphasized that music needed to be internalized before it could flow as movement and he would sternly warn against pre-composing Adavu structure and grafting them onto the song. Pandanallur Tirmanams are habitually crisp and short, crystallizing beauty and perfection of movement and Solakutu with complexity of rhythm in small capsule, complex art in miniature. The Adavus faithfully mirrored the rhythmic structures as the Pandanallur Guru frowned upon the practice of uttering cascades of solakuttus that were all sound and fury, while the dancers' feet merely picked up of the rhythms. The emphasis was on Natya Dharmi rather than Lok Dharmi, on lyricism and understatement rather than an overt drama. The Kuluku Nadai, lilting walk, was a consistent element in all the Abhinaya segment, a sort of substratum layer over which the Abhinaya was constructed. Clarity of hastas and wide sweep of arms while performing Abhinaya were also key characteristic. Mandering digressions in the name of Sanchari Bhav were anathema for these Guru. In their interpretation of Padams and Javalis, vulgarity in any form was strictly prohibited. In fact, their keen sense of delicacy often led to some of more explicit charanas being omitted from their choreography. The focus was always on content rather than packaging, on substance rather than sensationalism. The frequent lapsing into unwanted prolonged poses or acrobatic renderings of nritta were innovations followed by the Pandanalur Gurus. If at all any ornamentation took place, 
it was strictly endorsed by the context and the aesthetics of dance. After Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai, Chokalangam Pillai, that is from 1893 to 1968, became the guru of the Pandanalur stride. Chokalingam Pillai's leading disciple was Mambalam Gita, who not only maintained the purity of Pandanalur style, but was also known for her brilliant technique as well as her portrayal of dramatic roles in Tanjaur Quartet Varnams. She is said to have performed actively in the 50s and the 60s. He also trained other leading dancers such as G. Kaushalya, Suchitra, Indrani Rahman and others. He moved to Madras to teach his son Sudbraya Pillai, 1914 to 2008, grew up in the village of Pandanallur and was an apprentice under his grandfather and father. He has trained dancers Almelavalli, Meenakshi, Chitranjan, Prema Satish and others. Chokalingam Pillai and Subraya Pillai laid stress on Anga Shuddham and Araimani. Even at 75, Choklangam Pillai's dedication was such that he guided not only advanced students but also beginners teaching for hours. Tala was marked by Tutrukazi more often than fingers counting. The thin supple Kazi is a word is whittled from Gova wood. Subraya Pillai began training with his father first and continued with Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai. He started accompanying the students of Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai at a young age as a vocalist and assisted in Natuvangam. His proficiency as a vocalist was widely known and he was respected equally for his expertise in Natuvangam, which had an innate musical quality bringing forth the unique touch of great master. Composing adus based on the musical patterns of swara segment without exploiting the rhythmic frame too much in pure dance sections, keeping in mind the importance of the link between music and adavu patterns is an important feature of this tradition. Said Subravya Pillai in his interview to the Hindu a few weeks before his demise in May 2008. He was a dedicated adherent to the value imparted by his forefathers in the field of Bharatnatyam, focusing on aspects of proper paddhati with perfectly aligned rhythmic nuances set to intricate musical elements that are integral to the tradition. With the support of Sarangpani Ayengar, Chokalingam Pillai and Subraya Pillai pioneered the concept of 10-day Natyakala conference in December 1947 where demonstrations in the morning and performances in the evening were conducted with many outstation artists participating. Subsequently, Subraya Pillai or Vadyar headed the Lalita Subramanyam Natya Palli for many years. Revered for his gentle ways and total dedication, Vadyar was also known for his generosity of spirit. His student affirmed to the fact that though he did the choreography, they were free to develop their individuality. He would often say, I have given you the foundation, now build on it. While bemoaning the decline of items like Allaripu and Jatishwaram, Subraya Pillai stressed on the importance of music in dance. Adavus must be set to music first. Dance is one. The style differs only due to different creative minds. Thalam is important, but music is the sole inspiration for choreography. My grandfather used to compose while singing. Non-hereditary lineage of Pichaya Bani spread to T. M. Arunachalam, younger brother Vasudevan and Govindrajan. Each distinguished and taught many students and provided musical support. While Arunachalam and Vasudevan remained southbound, Govindrajan went to Delhi and sang for Sikkil Ramaswamy, Indrani Rahman and M.K. Saroja before teaching Kiran Sahagal and Jamuna Krishnan. The Pichaya school became a full-fledged college named after 
this illustrious guru in Tanjavur. This college contributed significantly to the teaching and enrichment of Bharatnatyam in Tanjavur when other gurus and masters had flocked to big cities to teach and get employed in institutions. In the claim of revival of the form, this migration was important in that period and helped further the fortunes of both the gurus and the form. The Pandanulur style is renowned for its masterpieces in choreography. Some of the main gems in the repertoire are the Tanjavur quartet Padavarnams, Sakhiye, Swami Ninne, Mohanama, Danike, Adimogam, Yemmaguva, Sami Ni Ramave, Sarasi Jabhana, choreographed by Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai. Also, part of their heritage are the valuable Jatiswaram in Ragam Vasanta, Saveri, Chakravakam, Kalyani, Bhairavi, etc., which are miniature masterpieces of elegant abstract adavus choreography. Thematic presentations which had already gained popularity in the early 1970s were not adopted as an alternative performance by Pandanalur gurus and the margam was mandatory. Central to the extensive Pandanalur repertoire were compositions of Tanjavur quartet including treasures like Padavarnam, Tanavarnam, Shabdam, Jatishwaram and Tillana. The performances of the Pandalanur Guru always opened with an Alaripu and the Jatishwaram was a must. Kautvam and Thodya Mangalam or even the Pushpanjali did not feature in Pandanulur repertoire of the, those early days. The post Varnam segment of the performance would include Padams and Javali of great composers and also compositions of Gopal Krishna Bharati and Bharatiyar amongst others and include items like Natanam Adinar and Natanam Seyum Padanar. There were also songs in lighter veins like Dikku Teriyada, Katil, Thirada Valiye Pillai and also occasional songs like Kutrala Kuruvanchi. Pandanalur Jailakshmi and Pandanalur Shabrijitam form hereditary families were among Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai's famous student. One dancer who captured the majesticity of Pandanalur style was Pandanalur Jailakshmi. Born in 1930, she learnt many Varnams, Padams, etc. from her guru, Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai, and was to be honoured for his amazing choreographies by the Raja of Ramanad, Sanmukha Rajeshwar Setupati. For the occasion, he composed a special Varnam for Jai Lakshmi in, in Ragam Vachaspati in praise of the Raja. When her guru took her to perform this in front of the Raja, they fell in love with first sight and she became his queen in 1946. After a glorious dancing career of about 15 years, Jai Lakshmi retired gracefully. She gave her first public concert at Music Academy and her orchestra was one of the first to be seated on the dais. This was a change since till then the musician would stand behind the dancers and play. She was famous for her dazzling technique and understated Abhinaya. During his apprenticeship, Subraya Pillai watched Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai teaching her and accompanied her in performance during his youth. Among the dancers of Pandanallur, Shabrajitam 1916-2000 was an outstanding dancer of her times. It is said that the age, at the age of nine, she had mastered a whole margam. Her vocal accompaniment to the recital of Tangachi of the same place at Tirumandal Mat impressed the pontiff so much that he requested the veteran Natovnar to present her in her maiden Bharatnatyam performance then and there, contrary to the custom of conducting the Arangetram at Lord Pashupatishwara Temple in Pandanallur. Subrajitam gave such a brilliant performance that Meenakshi Sundaram himself 
was astonished at her skill and maturity. Later, Sabrajitam had her formal arangetram at Pashupetishwar temple in Pandalulur with Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai and Chokalingam Pillai conducting the performance. The Madras Music Academy featured Subranjitam with her cousin Nagaratnam in 1935 and her solo in 1936. Probably these were the early performances of Bharatnatyam artist on stage. A mesmerized Rukmini Devi requested her to accompany her guru and train her in Ritha, her fort. A refined artist, she assisted Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai when he taught Mrinalini Sarabhai. At Kalakshetra, she met her life partner Sadashivam and retired in 1940 against her husband's wishes. Subrajitam's daughter Balachandra also danced at the music academy. Kalyani Amal of Tiruvalaputtur was one of the famous exponents of Pandanalur style. Her daughters Rajalakshmi and Jeevaratnam, known as Kalyani's daughters, were renowned artists. Jeevaratnamala commenced her training from the age of five with her uncle T.K. Swaminath Pillai, disciple of Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai. After three years, she was blessed to come under the direct tiltage of Tata, under whom she learned for eight glorious years. She blossomed into a fine artist in a span of 15 years, presented over 200 performances all over India, including Madras Music Academy in 1953. Regarding her training under Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai, Natya Bharanam started off on the basic Tayyatai on the spread of paddy grain while a long stick was held by two elder traditional dancers on either side with the teacher and taught in the center. The Sadir Vilakku was lit throughout the session. Tata taught both Nritha and Abhinaya, but he never conducted the recital. It was always his son Muttaya Pillai who conducted Natuvangam for his for her recital accompanied by her maternal uncle K. Krishnamurti Pillai on violin. At least 10 variations were taught for each Hastavini Yoga. Radhika Pillai, the niece of Jeev Ratnamala, continues the family tradition. Nirmala Ramchandran was the disciple of Pandanallur Chokalingam Pillai and Tiruvalputur Swamimathan Pillai. Travelling widely to spread the art form, Nirmala carried forward the Pandanallur tradition of five decades and more. During her six years' stay in Russia, many Russian girls trained under her. Almel Valli trained under Pandanallur Choklingam Pillai and his son Subraya Pillai. Music is of paramount importance in the Pandanallur Bani. It is also a style which attaches great importance to the purity of line in dance movement. Walli's dance is all this and much more with the additional fragments of her own sensitivity and inputs throughout her knowledge of Carnatic music of the Veena Dhanamal tradition. Walli says, Dance is not only seen but heard as well where a dancer sings with her body. Over the years, she has evolved her own style where there is an effortless synchronization of apparent contradictions, linearity and lyricism, symmetry and sinuosity, precision and poetry. She explores many complex layers of meaning in the poem and lyrics, giving them visual and melodic dimensions. Almel Walli, on whom film director Meshra made a fetching film that captures the beauty of Pandanallur form and brings out its quintessence, says, While Choklingam Pillai, Perivadyar, was a formidable figure who would brook no nonsense and would not suffer incompetence or casualness lightly, Subraya Pillai, Chinnavadyar, through his exacting in his standard, was also the gentlest of the gurus. These great masters were repositories of collective consciousness of many generations of dance guru. Many gurus taught while seated, never actually dancing the adavus. 
Even in Abhinaya, Subraya Pillai would demonstrate a line of a song with a sleeveless figure of an eye, just suggesting the flow of the arm or turn of the hastas. The beauty of this method of teaching was that it stimulated the imagination and compelled the student to internalize the lessons that was taught, so that a creative student could evolve strongly etched individual style within a style. Central to the extensive Pandanalur repository were compositions of Tanjavur quartet, which focus on songs steeped in classicism. I remember Subraya Pillai speaking of Suraku substance and Meenaku glitter adavus tracking the fact that Suraku adavus had to be bedrock, so to speak, on which the composition rested. Adavus, like the Satra adavus, Kidda to Meta Advus, Tai Tai Taha, that emphasize the Natya Rambha. The curved straight line of Natya Rambha is infinitely difficult to maintain precisely. Meenakshi Chitranjan, daughter of an IAS who became secretary, cultural department, pays tribute to her gurus Chokalingam Pillai and Subraya Pillai. Subraya Pillai was extremely traditional bound and reluctant to make any changes. He believed small changes lead to big changes and very soon the form will be lost. However, he never tried of creating many new versions of old composition which helped in maintaining novelty and freshness to the items. His unique talent was in composing Nritta patterns. In this area, his creativity flowed with so many complex, intricate and interwoven patterns of movement. He never composed by working arithmetically with the thala. He would just sing the melody while yielding the stick and simultaneously created patterns which would just fall in place with music. Music and movement merged effortlessly, which was a joy to watch. He always remarked that music and movement should walk together hand in hand like lovers in park. In the field of Abhinaya, he strongly advocated minimalistic approach, clarity in thought and civility in expression. Do little to convey a lot effectively, no frills, fancies, storytelling and drama. When questioned, they would always say the art form had seen many bad times and just been revived and children from good backgrounds were coming forward to learn. It is the duty of the teacher to maintain high level of dignity and restrain. However, he also believed with age and experience, the dancers could then explore and develop ideas with certain maturity. As a person, he was very simple in habit and disciplined in his diet, which I think was responsible for his good health, well-being until the age of 94. He was never commercial and the fee structure was just nominal for him to live and advocate life. The only thing they insisted was being treated with respect, insist on their name being bolder and bigger than the student and make sure of a reserved seat on the train while traveling. He had strong principles and would never accept another guru student or take back a student who had gone to any other Natuvnar or guru. The son of a renowned Mridangist, Pandanallur Srinivas Pillai, Pandanallur Pandyan hails from a traditional Natuvanar family. He had a rigorous training in understanding the nuances of Natuvangam from Pakira Swami Pillai. Later, he had advanced learning under Indra Rajan. For the last 20 years, he has been a Bharatnatyam instructor in Kalidasa, the dance school run by Meenakshi Chitranjan. He is also the director of Pandanarnu Natyalaya in Chennai and Udmalpet. If Bharatnatyam is known today worldwide, the credit goes to many pioneering gurus and Natuvnars of whom two reigned supreme, Guru Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai and Guru Muthukumar Pillai. Two different Banis, but same form because under them, most of the first generation of front-ranking Bharatnatyam dancers were trained. These two gurus 
singularly created a path for others to follow. While many benefited from the path shown, they branched out to their own journey as if only natural with real talent. I am sure students, you will also branch out with natural and real talent at the end of this lecture. Thank you.